In this video, we're going to solve for x by using the method of factoring. So I'm hoping that you guys kind of remember your factoring a little bit from algebra. We've got some different types of examples. Um, first, and I guess on all of the examples, you should look for a GCF. You remember what the GCF is? That's your greatest common factor. So you look at in this case, all three terms, by the way, do you see how this is x squared plus 9x plus 20 is equal to 0? We want these to be equal to 0, and you'll see why when we go through this problem, so you can use the zero product property to solve. So first is their GCF. Do these three terms have any common factors? And they do not, so we can go ahead and try to factor a trinomial. So trinomials, if this first one is just an x squared, you look at the last term of 20. So we want factors of 20 that add up to 9. So it could be you're looking at 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And hopefully you're saying, oh yeah, 4 and 5 work. Because 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 plus 5 is that middle term of 9. So that allows us to go straight into writing our two factors. You have x plus plus 4, that positive 4, and then x plus 5, and then carry down that equals 0. So basically, this trinomial gets factored into these two factors. You could FOIL this out, and if you FOIL it out, you would end up with x squared plus 9x plus 20. But now that it's factored, like we saw in our intro video, you can set each factor equal to 0. So we're going to say x plus 4 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. So we'll go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 4, and subtract 5. So x equals negative 4, and x equals negative 5. All right, example 10. We have a trinomial equal to 0, so that's good. Now look for any common factors. x squared plus 5x minus 14, is there a GCF? And there is no GCF, so we can go ahead and try our factoring. That means you look at the last term, negative 14. You want to be careful and pay attention to that sign. Factors of negative 14 that add up to a positive 5. All right, so you guys can't tell, but I just did these two problems and only recorded two seconds of it. So now I'm going to do it again. Um, hopefully I won't make any mistakes. <laughs> so example 12, when you solve by factoring, you want to always check to see if it's set equal to zero. You can tell that this one is set equal to zero, so we're ready to do that factoring. Um, first, look for the GCF. Now this example does have a GCF. You guys will notice that there's an X in both terms, so we're going to factor that x out front. So x goes out in front of parentheses. If you factor an x away from x squared, it leaves you with an x minus. If you factor the x away from this term, it leaves you with just the 15. All right, so now that it's factored, we do have two factors here. You have x times x minus 15. So those are both factors and we can set them both equal to 0. So we're going to say x equals 0 and x minus 15 equals 0. So x equals 0, that's already solved. Kind of nice, that one's done. This next one we can go ahead and add 15 to both sides, leaving us with x equals 15. And those are our two answers. All right, this last one over here, look to see if it's set equal to zero, and you can see that it's not. We can fix that though. We want to get this 8x to the other side, so we'll go ahead and subtract 8x from both sides. That cancels your 8x's on the right. Now be careful here, you don't want to put these two together. You have an x squared and an x term, those are not like terms. So we will go ahead and rewrite the problem x squared goes first because it has a higher exponent, minus 8x equals, and then when those canceled, that does equal 0. All right, next look to see if you have a GCF, and you can see both terms have that x, so we factor an x out front, 
leaving you with x minus 8 equals 0. And now we can see we have our two factors, x times x minus 8, so we set them both equal to 0. x equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0. That one is solved, so x equals 0 is one of our answers. And then we'll just add 8 to both sides, and we get x equals 8 for our second answer.